how much we can crank up the voltage on this before things go wrong. Close. We start to get arcs where we don't want them. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cluey Amateurs. I'm Jamie and I'm back today with quite a different video for you. Now some of you might know that I'm very interested in science, I have a strong science background, I'm a chemistry teacher um, in my day job, um, and so science is a big deal for me and something that I've wanted to do since starting this channel is produce some videos on science, technology and engineering. Definitely a bit of a break from what we normally do, but it's something I've really wanted to do and haven't got around to doing. But today is the first of those videos and the piece of technology slash engineering that I want to focus on is ion drive or ionic thrust, sometimes also called ionic wind. Um, now this is a concept for generating propulsion or lift which has been battered around for a very long time both in science fiction and in actual science and technology. Um, I remember speaking to a student at a conference last year um, about some research he'd done on this field as a really awesome high school science project. Um, but the thing that really reignited my interest in this field was at the tail end of last year, a research group at MIT managed the first flight, even though it was a small model aircraft, but the first flight powered by ionic thrust. So we're going to quickly explain what ionic thrust is, how it works, and then I'm going to talk you through how I managed to make a simple model to demonstrate this and do some demonstrations with it. Okay then, so ionic wind, ion drive, ion thrust, how, whatever you want to call it, how does it work? Um, now what I'm going to give here is a very simple explanation of it. Um, down in the description I will pop a link to a video of the MIT test flight um, and there's a really nice explanation delivered by a real expert there. But here's my simplified explanation. So what you'll have is a very large voltage, ideally DC, although a lot of systems currently use AC just because it's much easier to get a large AC current. Um, there's only alternating current works with transformers used to step it up. So you've got this high voltage. What you've then got is... So I've got this going with the thrust going that way. So you'll have your anode which is generally a sharp point, so that will be positive. And then you've got your cathode, which is generally more rounded, um, just because of the needs of the design, so that will be your negative charge. Over here, you've got your gas particles, gas molecules, um, so there's been nitrogen, oxygen, whatever other gases you've got present in the local atmosphere, being turned into positive ions as they give up an electron, so a little plus sign in there. That's then going to head off around the circuit. These positive ions are then attracted towards the negative electrode where they will be able to regain that electron. So over this side, they'll pick up an electron to reform whatever gas molecule they were before. In between these two points, though, what you'll get is your ions, which are moving this way at really quite high speeds, bumping into other gas molecules. And these don't need to be charged to take part in this, and these will all be bumped along in this direction, producing our ionic wind or thrust. So really, in order to generate ionic wind or thrust, what you need is a very high voltage or potential difference, a pointy anode, and some sort of probably rounded cathode. And between them, and going out past the cathode, what you get is this ionic wind as the positive ions formed at the anode are attracted to the cathode and bump into lots of air molecules along the way. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of a feel for how ionic thrust works and what it is. So how did I manage to build a model to demonstrate this concept? Well, here it is. All of the parts 
really quite easy to obtain, quite easy to find, except for this one in the middle. And I'll talk you through it right to left. So up this end, I've got the battery carrier from one of those cheap 9 LED flashlights that you can find in places like Poundland. Um, so I've taken the battery carrier out of there and also the push button switch. And that's not even soldered, the wire's just twisted together and there's a bit of hot glue holding this assembly together and then holding it onto this. Now this is the slightly more exotic component. This is a little high voltage step up module. Um, these were, I believe, designed to be used in stun guns. Obviously stun guns are illegal in the UK. However, possessing a module like this isn't illegal so long as you don't try to use it in some sort of stun gun. Um, now, there is a video of a guy whose name escaped me where he made a little ion propelled boat using one of these, which is what first inspired me to use this for this project. I'll pop the link to that in the description. There's also a brilliant video and very funny video by bigclive.com on how these actually work. And I'll also pop that link in the description if you want to find out how this works. In short, what we've got in here is an oscillator circuit turning this into AC current and then a series of step-up transformers to step the voltage way up into the kilovolts required for ionic wind to be produced. You've then got um, a series of fast recovery diodes or rectifiers to ultimately produce, um, and a capacitor, sorry, to ultimately produce a very high voltage pulsed DC output. Based on the very rough rule of thumb of one millimeter of arc per um, kilovolt, this is putting out between 12 and 14,000 volts. So coming off these nice chunky wires, here I've got the connection to the anode, which is just made up of these seven uh, wood screws. And that's just twisted together and heat shrunk. Um, and then I've got a crocodile clip on here just because I was trying to optimize the distance between these electrodes. It didn't work out quite as I'd hoped in the end. I was hoping that the distance between the tips of the anodes and the outer edge of the cathode would be just greater than the arc length or the length of arc it can produce. Um, it didn't quite work out that way once I actually started putting it together, but I did still get a decent ionic wind off of it. Um, then the cathode itself is just a single piece of, I think it's about half millimeter copper wire twisted into this kind of flower shape so that all of the anode points line up with the center of the circles that make up the cathode. In terms of the frame, this is just made of um, foam board. This is a material I hadn't really used before this year, uh, but I found that it's super easy to work with, easy to cut with a sharp knife, um, and nice and sturdy for building frames for simple projects and prototypes such as this. Um, everything is then just held together and insulated with an awful lot of hot glue. So if we fire it up, not a whole lot happens, at least not visibly, but if I put my hand there, I can feel a, not a strong breeze, but there, it's definitely there, I'm definitely not imagining, it's like someone blowing gently. So I've got a couple of things to try and demonstrate that. First one is some torn up tissue. Now if you watch the tissue very closely, you can just see it being blown by the ionic wind. I'll do that side on as well, just so you get a better view. So watch the tissue. So as I've said, not a whole lot of force, but definitely enough um, to move this tissue. Now something I have noticed is that if you get this too close to the cathode, it actually starts to interact with the electrical field around these and it actually gets attracted in. So let's see if we can demonstrate that. So there it's blowing, 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 being attracted. Blowing, blowing, blowing. Oh, not so much that time. But it does sometimes get caught up in that electrical field. Now, another super fun, but perhaps slightly more dangerous way of demonstrating this is with a flame. So you can see the flame grow and flicker when it's here, um, but obviously a flame, essentially being a little bubble of ionized gas, um, can interact in some very peculiar ways with the electric field, particularly if you place it between the electrodes. So let's take a look at that. Just turn it around so you guys get a better view. You can see the flame flickering there, 
in the ionic wind, turn it off, back to stable flame, flickering, and back. Now if you hold it very close, you start to get arcs where we don't want them, where we've got those ions in the air. Just try that again, but actually placing the match between the electrode. I wouldn't recommend this, but it does look pretty cool. So what you should see is the stretching out of the flame as it's attracted to the electrodes across with the electric field between them. Okay, so we'll just stop that there to have scorched the foam board slightly. Um, but I just think that's a couple of fun demonstrations of the fact that there is actually this ionic wind there, but there is also um, a very strong electric field, and that does need to be considered um, when thinking about the applications these can be used in. I can also hear kind of a whistling when it's switched on. I don't know if that's going to pick up on the microphone. Um, I'm not sure if that's the passage of the air or the whistling of the transformer and capacitor setup in the high voltage module. Um, I can also kind of smell something. It smells like ozone to me. So I think where the gas is being ionized, you have then got some kind of slightly funky chemical reactions going on. So you're probably getting ozones and maybe a few exotic nitrogen oxides being formed. Currently, the plan is to use these in aircraft. So have wires acting as the anodes out in front and then the uh, cathode being formed on the surface of the wing. So you get a wind over the wing to produce lift. But I can see these being used for all sorts of things. This technology really is in its infancy and only time will tell where we find use for ionic wind. So what we're gonna do now is head into a dark room and see if we can actually see the corona coming off these. So kind of the stream of ionized gas. This isn't an arc like you saw when I held the match to it. This will just be kind of a, a glowing blue light. It's very faint though, so it might not show up very well on my camera. Okay, so apologies for the slightly dark and grainy picture, but we have now moved to a room that I can make suitably dark. Um, so we've got the ionic wind generator, the ion thruster set up. Um, what I'm going to do is turn out the light and then turn, or actually I'll turn it on first and then turn out the light and hopefully you'll be able to see those corona. You'll notice that they're not appearing on the tip of every single nail, so this probably isn't working as well as it could and something that I might like to do is to come up with a better design for this, um, something where everything is working as planned. If you do want to see a video of how to make one of these, or a video of me making a better version of this, please do pop a comment. But right now, let's see if we can see those Corona. So, on generator on. Light off. Okay, and if I just tip it, you can just see three points of light. Oh, make that two points of light from the um, anodes, and also this kind of more significant blue glow for around the cathode. So what I'll also include is a photo, if I can get one, of those corona, as that might make it a bit more visible. So that's about it for this video and for this iteration of my ion drive, ion thruster, whatever you want to call it. Um, as I said previously, do let me know in the comments if you want a video on how to build one of these. I am probably going to be making a better version, so I am likely to film that. Things I'd like to try and improve are having um, a better optimization of the gap between the electrodes, a better design for the um, cathode, so maybe not this kind of flower design, perhaps sharper, more conductive anodes, and also optimizing the number of anodes to make sure that we're getting a corona coming off of every one. Something else I'd like to do is get a spare high voltage module and see how much we can crank up the voltage on this before things go wrong. Um, if you are interested in this, do check out some of the links in the descriptions. So there's one to Corey Cox's engineering projects. I don't think he uploads anymore, but he uploaded a fantastic video of how he made an ion propelled boat with a very similar setup to this. That is definitely worth a watch. Um, there's the real engineering video of the MIT um, glider that actually flew using ion propulsion. Fantastically put together and really nicely explained. There's a link to bigclive.com's explanation of how the high voltage module produces such a high pulse DC voltage. 
that's really well for watch. Um, there is some bad language in there though, so don't say I didn't warn you. And also thanks need to go to DIY Perks for introducing me to foam board, which is a fantastic material for little projects such as this. So please do let me know what you think of this in the comments. Let me know if you want more information on this project. And if you've enjoyed watching this, if you found it useful or interesting, do hit that like button. Please do also consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're here for science and technology videos, this is the only one on the channel at the moment, but I will be making more alongside my normal content, which includes outdoors stuff, um, outdoors gear reviews, air gunning, all kinds of bits. It's a very eclectic channel. It's more somewhere for me to showcase and remember my projects. Um, and I'd love for you to join me for that adventure. Right now though, I've been Jamie, this has been Clue Amateurs, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.